Hi, my name is Allison Martin and I'm a trombone player. Today I'm here to talk to you about my most recent project, Heartseeker, a Kingdom Hearts collection. It's a collection of 14 tracks spanning the entire Kingdom Hearts franchise and also several subgenres of jazz. I created this album in the hopes that both Kingdom Hearts fans and casual listeners alike could find something to enjoy. I also wanted fans of the franchise to renew their love for some of these tracks. It's actually why I named the album Heart Seeker, so the fans could search their hearts and find some love for this music. I'll admit, for some of these tracks, fans might need convincing. So today I'm going to take you through my process, process. and I'll show you how this album went from an idea to reality. First comes the very difficult step of choosing which tracks make the cut. I spent several weeks going over every single Kingdom Hearts soundtrack and rekindled some of my love for this music. I knew I wanted some Kingdom Hearts classics, some hidden gems, and some really hidden gems. So I made sure to go over every Kingdom Hearts game that has ever been, including the mobile game. After locking in the track selection, I sat down for several more weeks for the arrangement process. Now, these are some of the first jazz arrangements I've ever made, so I did a lot of research going into this. I watched you do. I looked up instrumentation, general jazz structure, riffs that you would hear rhythm section players doing, and things like that. I knew I wanted a variety of ensembles in this thing, so I opted for big band, traditional jazz combo, and some kind of non-traditional combos. I listened to a ton of jazz to get prepped for this. I listened to old jazz and new jazz and Latin jazz and jazz funk and jazz rock and pretty much every kind of jazz you could want just to see what actual jazz players were out there in the real world doing. I even bought myself a standard big band arranging book so that I could get some insight on how to make a variety of textures and to get a general idea of the big picture for each of my tracks. I got some inspiration from Dave Sloniker, the Jacob Mann Big Band, the 8-Bit Big Band, Snarky Puppy, and many, many more. And finally, after almost a month of arranging, the album was ready for recording. For this album, I knew that my ideas were a little bigger than in the past, and I knew that for a jazz album, you need saxophones. I also knew the going rate for a professional saxophonist, and I knew how many saxophone parts I would need with 14 track albums with four to five saxophone parts per track. So I opted for the DIY method and I grabbed myself a Jean-Paul alto saxophone. Now this is not a world changing saxophone, it's not even a professional saxophone, but it's good enough for my purposes and heck, I played saxophone for six months in middle school, so what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so with that out of the way, I could finally start tracking. So first, I thought I would introduce you to the main stage of my music making, where the magic really happens. What's that? Oh, why, yes, they are two closets. Thank you for asking. Actually, you know what? Closets are amazingly good as a recording space. They're small. Typically, they're full of too many clothes or old things that you don't need anymore. And that actually deadens the room so that when you record, it gives a really nice sound quality. So it's actually kind of nice. They're also very accessible in almost every home, and if you have a remote control on your phone, you can actually navigate and record everything without really needing to run to the computer at all. So that makes things very convenient for someone who records from home, like me. So first, I recorded trombones, as that is my forte. I also find it nice though to record trombones first because it gives a nice foundation for my non-primary instruments. Sometimes I'll go back and redub a solo or I might go back and change a take based on what I recorded on trumpet later, but for the most part, trombones are done. Easy. Next come the trumpets. 
I generally like to record my main instrument first, followed by my non-primary instruments, and I also like doing brass first because, one, it's what I'm most confident in, but two, it typically gives me a lot of good energy to work with when I start recording saxophone, which I'm not so comfortable with. Similar to trombone, I will go back and do the occasional redub for trumpets, but typically that's only because I cannot play high at all and I have no endurance on the trumpet. So for the most part, trumpets are also done. And finally, I recorded the saxophones. Now, one interesting thing about this album is that I just have an alto saxophone where really I should have two altos, two tenors and a baritone saxophone. So I just arranged around that fact and just recorded with four, sometimes five alto saxophones. I am so sorry, saxophonists. As expected, this definitely took the most amount of time and was frustrating at times. I did hundreds, hundreds of takes for this album, many of which are broken down to just two or three notes at a time because I am not a woodwind player. Still, I do think that the tone is okay and it pretty much gets my point across. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the saxophone tracks of the album. Of course, there are instruments that I cannot play at all and that is where friendship is my power. The amazing David Russell recorded piano, Ro Panaganti recorded guitars, my friend Ginny Morden did a flute solo for me, and Andy Rue is laying down some bass. They are all fantastic musicians and they bring such a vibrance to this album that I could never do alone, so I'm extremely grateful to their contribution. And we also can't forget all of the musicians who lend their voices to my Bouncerama track, which will also be featured on the album. So big, big thanks to all of those musicians as well. And finally, we're in post-production. This is where all of the instruments will be balanced out and they'll get tuned and they'll have some subtle effects put on where at the end it will hopefully sound like a bunch of real life friends on a real life stage just doing their thing. Ro Panaganti is doing the mixing and of course the one and only James Hoffman is going to do the mastering for the final product. More friends, more power, right? From start to finish, I have tried to put my love for the Kingdom Hearts franchise into this album. I've tried to put my love for trombone and band and jazz music into this album, and I've tried to put all of my love and appreciation for my friends into this album. I pushed every musical limit I have to make something bigger and better than anything I have ever done before, and I think I might have done it. Whether you're a general music fan or a casual video game music listener or a huge fan of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, I really hope that you enjoy Heartseeker, a Kingdom Hearts collection when it releases later this year. And I really hope you'll tell me what you think when it comes out. I'm Allison Martin, I play trombone, and thanks for watching. <laughs>